Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, good to see you again. And I know this is a question about drug pricing today, and I will come by that. But I, like a number of my colleagues, have some questions about the ongoing crisis of the children at the border. Um, the Department of Health and Human Services has contracted facilities to house thousands of unaccompanied minors, including one in my state, in the Shenandoah Valley, the juvenile center near Stanton, Virginia, where there have been very disturbing reports of abuse and lawsuits filed as a result of those accusations. I sent your, the administration multiple letters on the need for us to get information back, uh, Senator Kane and I have, and my hope would be that uh, uh, we can get those responses and be anxious to know if you'd be able or willing to comment on any of the accusations made about the, stand, the center in Stanton. Sure. Um, so without regard to the particular individuals involved, um, it's important to know that when we get these children into our care, they're immediately evaluated with a mental health and behavioral evaluation, as there are with any children. With 12,000 children in our care, 60,000 per year, there are going to be some children who need extra care, some of which is mental health or may present a risk to themselves or others. We have contracted with some facilities, including the one you mentioned, that specialize in juvenile care of a special need for those who may be a risk to themselves or others. Our children are kept separate from the rest of the juvenile population. These are, it's a separate grant provision. They are required to fully comply with all state licensure, state laws around medication, et cetera. We oversee that, the state licensing authorities oversee that. Obviously, we take any allegations very seriously here. We want proper and appropriate care for these children, so any allegations are quite disturbing. I have seen nothing to confirm the nature of those allegations, but we will, we will certainly respond my to hope, and work my, with you on that. My hope would be um, the reports have come up of minor, uh, minors being kept in solitary confinement for 23 to 24 hours, to being strapped to a chair, to being uh, strapped to a chair without any clothing, to have bags put over their head, um, all practices that both seem inhumane and worthy of a great deal of review. Now, the I, I just wonder that without spe understanding, you may not be able to speak to the specifics of what happened in Stanton, um, what level of training uh, does the OR put for guards in these type of facilities as in, if in fact it shows that these actions took place, I would hope that we would put training regimes in place that would not sanction such behavior. So again, without in any way knowing to be able to confirm the validity of any of those types of, those types of allegations, um, this would be subject to state requirements and licensure around the care of children in any kind of custodial arrangement. And so uh, there would be whatever the state, whatever the state of Virginia, Commonwealth of Virginia's licensure requirements are and oversight there in addition to ORR oversight. I do not know that we have separate training in addition to state licensure requirements around the care, around the care in those juvenile detention facilities. I'll be happy to get back to you on that because I do not know the answer to that. We, we have sent a couple of letters. The, the sooner you can get me a response on those, uh, uh, the better. Thank you. Let me move. Um, to a moment to an area that Senator Whitehouse was already talking about, and that is around the pricing of generic drugs. We we saw a great deal of relief 15 years ago, but as you've, as you've indicated, the, the, in generics ended up them trying to price right below the price point, or sometimes margins were so thin that companies would not continue to produce particularly older patented drugs, and uh, the ability to keep competition in the generic marketplace has dramatically declined. In many areas, we may only have one generic. What tools has the administration proposed, or can you or, or um, CMMI use to try to increase more genetic, generic competition and actually build enough of a market here where there might actually be, in addition to the brand, three or four generics to provide the kind of price competition that we need to try bring drug prices down. I absolutely agree with you, and certainly if you have any suggestions, I, I would welcome them. Um, we are working, the FDA commissioner is working to ensure that as we have any product approaching sole source status as a generic that we're making clear to the manuf other manufacturers that that's a market opportunity, make expedited pathways for generic approval, streamlining any processes we have to get products to market there to compete and bring them in. We need to look on the reimbursement side. That's where the request for information is asked for insight there. 
again, any help you can provide ideas, open, open book, please. I'd, I'd love to sit down with you on that because I do think pricing transparency and, again, more knowledge within the marketplace of possible opportunities. Um, we can actually see whether the market will perform or not or whether we need, as Senator Whitehouse and I tend to agree, other things to kind of spur this type of competition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.